Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. You are learning with Dr. Shobha Nikam. In this video, we will talk about very basic thing of VLSI that is VLSI design flow. VLSI design flow is in, you know, in every electronic device, in every system, chips are present. But do you know how these chips are fabricated? Of course, now you will say the chips are made up of semiconductor material, millions of transistors are present in single tiny chip, but how they are created. Now, suppose you have one problem statement, then how to convert that problem statement into chip? So, these steps are explained in this video that is VLSI design flow and I have taken contents of this video from the book VLSI CMOS VLSI design or circuits and systems perspective. So, this is VLSI design flow here I will explain it in brief and then in upcoming slides I will explain each and every block in details. So, let us say assume you have one problem statement you want to design adder simple adder circuit and in my adder there are two inputs and there are two outputs sum and carry. So, very first thing is you must know system specifications. So, my specifications is my adder. It has two inputs. It has two outputs. Both inputs are single bit inputs. Both outputs are single bit outputs. After knowing specifications, next step is you must convert your specifications into either circuit diagram or you can convert it into code. So, that comes under architectural design, functional design and circuit design. Once your code is ready or once your circuit diagram is ready, next step is functional simulation, whether my circuit is working correctly or not. Functional, just in, let's say in AND gate. When both inputs are 1, then only output is 1. Otherwise, for 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, output is 0. So, we need to generate test vectors. Test vectors are four conditions 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. We'll apply those test vectors to AND gate and we will check whether my AND gate is giving correct output or not. If it is giving us correct output, it means functionality is correct. Now we can go for chip fabrication. So after functional simulation, next step is physical design. So, in physical design, now AND gate is simple example, the only one uh, gate we have, but I have a very complicated circuit. Then there are multiple blocks present in that circuit. Then I need to identify where to keep which block on the chip. Just like your room, you have cupboard, you have TV, you have table, you have a bed, then you, you know, you can't keep uh, our, uh, your cupboard at the center of the room. There is specific position for each and every block. Similarly, here also we need to identify position for components. Also, we need to identify position of clock so that in sequential design, every flip-flop will receive clock simultaneously and there will not be clock skew, there will not be clock jitter. All that comes under physical design. Physical design is floor planning means planning of where to put which thing on the chip. After that, once physical design is done, next is physical verification. So, this is design rule check, uh, layout versus schematic, electrical rule check that we need to check. It means after putting each and every component on the chip, we need to check whether the spacing is maintained between two metallic wires, whether the spacing is maintained between contacts that comes under DRC, design rule checks. Then whether our layout and schematic both are same. Physical design is all about layout. After that, again, post layout processing, post layout simulation, timing consideration, and then we go for fabrication of our chip. For that, we use wafers. Of course, we'll discuss each and these are the wafers. And these small corner, uh, the squares are our tiny chips. Then packaging of those chips, these rectangular chips are kept at the center of this IC. The cavity is made at the center of this IC and the, uh, the chips are kept in those cavities. 
so very first is specifications so your specifications must be ready before you design something so what comes in specifications how many inputs are there how many outputs are there number of bits in those inputs and outputs then how many clock signals are there what is clock frequency maximum clock frequency how much area on chip this circuit will uh, occupy then how much power it will consume see power consumption is very important now many of our devices are portable devices they are not plug in devices like our laptop laptop works on battery so it is very necessary or our mobile phones so it is very necessary that the circuit must consume minimum power so in specifications you must mention power efficiency also next is design entry in design entry there are two ways either you can enter your design by using schematic schematic is by considering different components and gates or gates connections between them and hdl means either you can write vhdl code or you can write verilog code so design entry is you need to create your design from the specifications so specifications are on the paper now you are entering your design through software so either you can can write code or you can design a schematic and for writing that vhdl code you can either use structural data flow or sequential modeling a separate video is prepared on that and the link is given in the description box for modeling styles then comes functional simulation functional simulation checks only functionality it means for adder when both inputs are zero i am getting some zero carry zero when the input is 0 and 1 or 1 and 0 only one input is 1 then sum is 1 and carry is 0 so it checks functionality whether functionality is correct or not and it also detects errors like syntax errors or unconnected nets and output is observed via waveform viewer of course through waveforms we can check the output we apply test vectors and we check the output through waveforms then planning placement and routing ppr so this is about as i told you floor planning it fixes relative locations of sub blocks where to keep which blocks then placement routing routing means finding shortest path between two blocks see when we have complex system output of first gate is connected to input of second output of second is connected to input of third so all of them are interconnected in case of synchronous circuit single external clock is connected to all the flip flops so in planning placement and routing you need to identify position of each and every block position of clock input data input everything timing simulation timing simulation means the first one was functional simulation it checks functionality timing simulation tells us after how much time i am getting output of course my inputs are 0 0 and in adder i am getting some 0 and carry 0 but how much is the delay that we get to know from the timing simulation so it verifies gate and net delays after placement so what is gate delay as i told you output of first gate is connected to input of second gate so that delay from one gate's output to next gate's input that is gate delay and net delay is propagation delay due to wiring wires are used for the and that is net delay so once design will meet timing specifications also it is functionally correct it is the delays are minimal it is not possible that delays are zero but delays are minimal now everything is proper then we go for fabrication so in fabrication there are full custom ic's and semi custom ic's so full custom means what for my own specifications i am creating all my so new system so that is application specific integrated circuit for my application i'll make new ic and semi custom custom means it uses pre defined cells standard cells or fpgas field programmable gate arrays can be used so asic means it is used for that particular applications only whereas fpga means we can reprogram it again and again same chip can be used multiple times i'll download one code then it will act as that like adder after after that i'll erase that code i'll add code of and gate so ic will act as and gate so that is programmable 
Then final design is translated into mask and mask is sent to foundry for chip fabrication. Design is taped out and marks are created. So the, the wafer I uh, showed you in the first slide. So the masks are created and after those masks, Mosses and foundries handle multi-project wafers and testing ensures functional correctness of final chip. After sending it to foundry, then masks are created and then after masks are created, they are uh, packaged, the uh, ICs are placed in the, at the center of the chip, uh, the chips are placed at the center of the IC and that is called as packaging. After packaging, next step is uh, vibration test or uh, different tests are performed on the after packaging of IC. So, in this way, we can design our own chips. We must know our specifications. After that, we must enter those specifications. We must convert those specifications into code or into circuit. Then we check functionality. After functionally, when it is working functionally correct, then we go for its layout. In layout, we go for floor planning, placement of components. We identify the position for each and every block. Then we go for timing simulation. When timings are also correct, then masks are created. The wafer, the circular wafer and, at, and that wafer, the different masks are placed. Then those masks are cut down and they are placed at the center of our IC. Then after packaging, after packaging, IC provides the, the, uh, It provides mechanical and thermal support. After that, different tests are performed and after testing, then ICs are delivered to the customer. So in this way, uh, we can fabricate our own chips. This is all about VLSI design flow. If you feel this video is really useful, then share it with your friends. Ask them to subscribe and you also subscribe and like, uh, like to this video. Thank you so much for watching.